Good morning, everyone. Before we start, I would like to request everyone to observe a moment of silence. Around this time on Sunday, day before yesterday, there was a terrible plane crash in one of our member countries and our host country, Nepal. About 72 people lost their lives, including one of my colleagues from the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development. He, along with his two children and his mother, lost their lives in that tragedy. So may I request you to join my colleagues at ISIMO, the people and government of Nepal, to observe a moment of silence. Thank you very much, Excellencies. Uh, I'm very happy to be standing here to have this opportunity at the invitation of the Arctic Circle and the Abu Dhabi Forum. I would like to thank Honorable Chairman President Grimson, who has been the inspiration behind this dialogue. As President Grimson already mentioned, this journey between the Arctic Circle and the Hindu Kush Himalayas, the third pole, started way back in 2010, actually. The communication started then, and then we were able to meet in Reykjavik under his chairmanship and chart out a roadmap to build regional cooperation in the Hindu Kush Himalayan along the line of the Arctic Council. We have not reached there, but uh, the road ahead looks optimistic, looks much clearer than it used to be 10 years ago. And as His Excellency mentioned, in 2015, we were able to follow that up in Bhutan and later on in India. So this is an ongoing process. So what I would do now, and with the friends of the Hindu Kush Himalayas, the third pole, along with my uh, colleagues from the regional member countries, we have uh, the high-level task force members from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, from Nepal, uh, and my colleague uh, also from uh, ECMO, the former Deputy Director General and present Policy Advisor of ECMO, Dr. Sharma, was very much involved in the Hindu Kush Himalayan Assessment Report, which brings out clearly the state of the environment, the state of the ecology, the state of the socio-economy in that uh, region. So he would be going into more details later on in the sessions. So I will just touch on the role that ECMOD plays. By the way, the ECMOD stands for the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development. Now, as already mentioned by Her Excellency, the Honorable Minister of UAE, ECMOD has eight regional member countries. So it's a regional knowledge, learning, and sharing center and these eight countries are Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, China, India, Myanmar, Nepal, and Pakistan. What is so important about this region? I think uh, Honorable President Grimson, as well as the Honorable Minister for Climate and Environment of UAE already touched. This is a unique region, a region rich in biodiversity, in culture, and more importantly, it is also referred to as the water towers of Asia. Why is it called third pole even? It is third pole called third pole because outside of the two poles, the North and South Pole, it has the largest reserve of ice. I think we'll be talking about ice a lot more since Iceland is leading this process. And I think I completely agree with, uh, with the chairman when he says that we have to stop the melting of the ice and the rest will follow. So, again, it was already mentioned, close to 1.9 billion people depend on the ecosystem services that the region provides. It is the source of 10 of Asia's largest rivers. You may have heard of the Indus, the Ganges, the Brahmaputra, the Irrawaddy, Salvin. All these rivers originate from the glaciers from the third pole. So what happens if the third pole collapses? Third pole is the central pole. So if you imagine it as a tent, if the central pole collapses, the rest of the tent will collapse. And that is the kind of image that we have in mind. Now geographically, 
as I mentioned, is a unique region. They are one of the highest areas in the world. And you can see the geographical features. So it stretches right from the Pamir, from the Hindu Kush, Himal Hindu Kush uh, ranges in the west to the eastern Himalayas, covering all these eight countries. And it is one of the most vulnerable regions to climate change. The crisis is not going to be 100 years down the line or 50 years down the line. We are already facing the crisis now. The climate crisis is there. My colleague, the Honorable Chairperson of the Pakistan Agriculture Research Council will probably share the devastating impact of the floods in Pakistan last year. Then we had been having this kind of uh, disasters very frequently and with much more intensity and the uh, Climate is largely driven by the summer monsoon and the westerlies. So where does ISIMOT stand? ISIMOT is not a research organization per se. It's not a development organization. It's not a university. But we harvest evidence. We harvest knowledge. We harvest good practices from the region and around the globe and try to transfer that knowledge to our regional member countries, to partners working in the same areas. So we lie in the interface between science, policy, and practice. The key roles that we play, we play the role of a facilitator. So at this stage, ISIMO is focused on bringing climate dialogue to the fore among our regional member countries. So we facilitate the exchange of information, data, exchange of knowledge between scientists, policy makers from our regional member countries as a neutral convener. And I must say that uh, we have the political organization of this region. You may have heard of the South Asia Regional Cooperation. At this stage, I must say it is not very active. But we step in as a neutral, politically neutral convener, and we are able to bring our scientists from China, India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, all across, coming together and discussing these very, very important issues. I would even go as far as saying that it is the only regional organization that is able to bring from what is also geopolitically a very fragile and delicate region together to discuss these common issues, as you can see here today. And also globally, we would like to promote the mountain agenda. And uh, we're very happy to hear from both President Grimson and the Honorable Minister earlier that UAE has the presidency of COP28 would guide us, help us, support us to make our presence felt at COP28 and represent the voice of the mountains and mountain people. The Hindu Kush Himalayan assessment report that we brought out in 2019 clearly gives a very vivid picture of what is happening in this region. The glaciers there are melting faster than anywhere else because of the elevation dependence. Because of the high elevation, the warming is taking much faster, and the glaciers are melting at a very alarming rate. Assessments show that uh, if you don't do anything by the end of the century, two thirds of the glaciers would disappear. That is at a projection of 1.5, you know, if you are able to manage to limit the temperature rises to below 1.5 degrees centigrade. But latest IPCC reports show that we will hit temperatures above two degrees Celsius each year. That would mean almost all the glaciers might disappear. So what we do is we collect evidence-based situation, we look at the trends, and we also package those, analyze those, and share this information and knowledge with our member countries as well as the global community. Now we have recently developed a new strategy to bring ourselves closer to the ground realities to the priorities and needs of our member countries, needs of our region. So we would also now like to focus our work, working towards a greener, more inclusive, and climate resilient Hindu Kush Himalayan. A safer and more secure Hindu Kush Himalayan region by preparing our people to deal with disasters. So in this respect, the upstream downstream linkages, early flood warning systems, Monitoring the tents, all this becomes very, very important to make the region a, a little more safer. And also support the communities living in the mountains 
and in the immediate vicinity of the mountains to be prepared for disasters with proper response mechanisms. And we would like to have transformative changes, support transformative changes through influencing the policies in our member countries. Empower youth, empower women, and pursue a carbon neutral economy. So that is something that now we have clearly spelled out in our strategy. Our mission is to build and share knowledge that influences regional policy, drives action, attracts investments to enable its member countries and communities to transition to greener, more inclusive, and climate resilient development. Now, there is hope for regional cooperation. I think we can learn a lot from the Arctic Council and similar organizations in the mountains. Based on the discussions that we had in Reykjavik under the chairpersonship of uh, His Excellency President Grimson, we set about, first of all, making the assessment uh, that my friend, Dr. Sharma, will be able to share the details from this assessment. But one of the key recommendations from this assessment is the need for building regional cooperation. Now, there are similar uh, parallels between the Arctic Council and the Hindu Kush Himalayan region. We have also two huge nations, India and China, just as the Arctic Council, Arctic Circle has US and Russia. But these are challenges that uh, I think our countries are recognizing and willing to come together. There is so much interest, both within India, China, and the rest of the member countries, to come together to work towards a high-level institutional mechanism to promote regional cooperation. So in October 2020, we had this first ministerial-level summit. And the ministers have unanimously agreed and signed this declaration to work towards strengthening regional cooperation. And the first step is to establish a regional high-level task force to come up with a recommendation on the form and the shape and the kind of role that this council would play. Now, as uh, President Grimson also mentioned, this doesn't have to be a legally binding instrument or uh, uh, organization for coming up with declarations and protocols that are legally binding. It could be an organization that could come up with agreements which are, in my own terms, I would like to call it morally binding and ethically binding. So that if there is a likely event of a glacial lake outburst flood from a glacial lake in China, that information will go in time to people living downstream in Nepal, India, or Bangladesh so that lives and properties could be saved. So that is the idea. And we are rapidly mover, moving towards it. We have now a draft recommendation that we would be discussing further and working towards having the second ministerial meeting to have this uh, uh, council or round table or whatever we you know, choose to call it later on established. So that's it. Thank you, Arctic Circle. And thank you, UAE, for having us here. Uh, we look forward to strengthening, uh, strengthening our engagement so that uh, when we reach here again for COP28, I think the region will come as one block with one voice to represent the mountains and the mountain communities of the Hindu Kush Himalayan region. Thank you very much.